We had a firestorm on our blog this weekend. If you didn't catch what we said, hop over there after today's broadcast and let us know what you think. Hello, fellow traders everywhere. Adam Hewison here, co-founder of Market Club, with your 1 p.m. or update for Monday, the January 9th. Merkel and Sarkozy get cozy gain over transaction tax. What's all that about? We'll be looking at the euro and the gold markets and look at what is happening right now in both of those markets at real time. And why stock names shouldn't matter. We'll be looking at Juniper Networks, Netflix, and CareFusion and see how the trade trials are analyzing these big movers today. Has the rally in the bank stocks come to an end? We'll examine three major bank stocks today and show you how our trade trials pointed the way to the direction of these markets. Now let's go to the one truth we rely on every day here at Market Club, and that's our trade trial technology. But first, if you have a chance, come visit us with our Investor Summit. It's going to be on uh, it's going to be later on this year, and I think you'll really enjoy that. So look at our blog for the latest posting on that. So anyway, the first market we're looking at in our trade triangles is going to be the S&P 500. And you see a plus 60, which means automatically that's in a trading range. You can see how this market has just sort of gone into a sort of flat line right around these levels, these 1278 levels, very, very key. If we have one piece of news, either positive or negative, it's going to move this market very quickly. We've just sort of entering or exiting, I should say, part of the silly season, which has really been uh, a really difficult market for a lot of people. Uh, and the silly season refers to very thin or low volume markets that a hedge fund or anybody else can push around. And we'll be getting more volume coming into these markets as we go into the new year, particularly after about the 15th of January, which is only a few days away. But let's watch the markets very carefully. But generally speaking, you've seen a lot of doji lines here. Today's a classic example. The market's about unchanged for the day. And that is somewhat of a concern because it would say an equilibrium between the bulls and the bears. We're at the top level of the Donchian trade channel. If we go down, you can see we're actually, we've got some bearish divergences we're a little concerned about there. And also with our trade triangles, you can see that our monthly trade triangle is still in a negative mode. Weekly and daily positive, and that's what's giving you this inflection of equilibrium right now in these markets. So I would think we'll be getting some resolve for a trend in this market very soon. So stay tuned for that. So let's go to our next market, and that's going to be the silver market. And again, we have a minus 70. All of our trade triangles are negative. Today's action, even though we're higher on the day, we're up about, oh, just about 1%. It still isn't exciting. I think this market is going to go head lower and test the lows that we're seeing right here in the late part of December, December 29th to be exact, with a low coming in around 27, 26.14. I would not be surprised to see the market come back down to test the 27 level. So still negative on that market. It's going to have to do a lot more reparations to get it moving higher, if it in fact it's going to move higher. We've looked at this market many times before, and we still think that it's going to be down to the low to mid 20s. So let's see how that plays out. Looking at gold, gold has a minus 65. It's a trading range, but look at the action today, and the gold is not good. Even though we're up a little bit for the day, 0.14%, hardly even bears talking about, but this action, it looks as though to me, it looks as though it's rolling over. You can see this right here, that's sort of rolling over to the downside. And with our monthly negative and our weekly negative, only the daily is positive. That's sort of causing that little sort of doji line. But it just seems to me like we're rolling over to test probably these lines right here, somewhere around the 1560 level, which we outlined in today's blog. So let me clear up the screen again and get this uh, go on to our next market. The next market we're looking at is going to be the copper market, and again, look at this copper market just on a simple a simple chart. Uh, you can tell it's basically building, or it's just a flat line. You can see these lines right here, just boom. We're kind of like a trading range, and really nothing to speak of, and it would appear that we're going to do another test of possibly this low level around the 325 level. So again, Minus 55, it's a trading range, so you could be popping back and forth. But generally speaking, I think this level here, the 350 level, is in fact going to be a top. And if we get the weekly uh, long, excuse me, short, I think we'll, uh, we'll see this market come under pressure. And I think that'll push the market further down 
to test those lows. Let's see how that plays out. But generally speaking, the longer term trend is negative. And the short term trend, the daily trend is also negative today. So let's see how that plays out. Next market we're going to look at is the crude oil market. And this crude oil market is actually not acting that well, in my opinion. We had had obviously we closed very well here, but this is the doji line we talked about uh, in one of our earlier broadcasts. This was sort of confirmed the next day. And also you've had two down days here. So if we close down here, this is, looks like you've put in an interim top right around these levels, which is around the 103, 104, 103 90, 104 level. Uh, I think that's going to be a very, very key level to watch in this market. But generally speaking, it would look as though we are building potentially, again, this is potentially, where it looks like we're building a base to push this market a lot higher. And that's the base we're looking at. That's what we call the energy field. Now, the energy field will only come into play if we really see a strong close over the 104 level. If we see a lot, this is the March contract we're looking at. If we see a strong close over 104, then I think this energy field will be completed and we can look for this market to go much, much higher, possibly to the 120 level. So let's see how that plays out. Uh, certainly, it has, to, it has to begin to regroup very soon. Otherwise, it's in danger of just going into a very broad trading range. So let's see how that plays out in the next few days. And also looking at the dollar index, the dollar index, uh, this is Sunday's action. Of course, a very light trading day on Sunday. Uh, we're down today. This is an equilibrium. We're looking for this market to hit 81.50. That's, in fact, what we hit early this morning. We have a plus 100, meaning the trend is still very strong. I suspect that we see any pullback, we're going to see good support coming in around the 80. Uh, 85 level, uh, and I think that's going to hold any kind of pullbacks. The trend clearly is up. You can see how it's. You can see how this market is beginning to, uh, not beginning. It's has been trending higher, and I think that's going to continue. We may see a sort of consolidation here, but the dollar is actually still very, very strong for a number of reasons. And I think it's kind of like, it's the, it's what, what's the least weak? Is it the euro or is it the dollar? So right now, it seems to be the euro that's the weakest of the two. So let's clear this off, go to our next market. And we've got a lot to cover today. It's kind of fun to be back uh, looking at the markets. Uh, and also, the markets are looking interesting. Uh, and that's the key thing. But here we are, the Reuters Jeffries CRB Commodity Index. You can see right now, we sort of got towards the upper level of the Donchian Trade Channel. Now, we use Donchian Trade Channel. People ask me, you know, what, what is this? This is the Donchian Trade Channel. You get up towards the high end, just like you get to the low end, especially the type of markets we're seeing. You tend to see the market come back in, come back in. You get to the top end, like we did here. You tend to see the market come back in, and so forth. So right now, I think we're sort of towards the upper end of the range. Uh, I think we could sort of see more, cons more sort of sideways action as reflected in our trade triangles, which are plus 55, meaning the long-term monthly is still down. That's a downtrend. The weekly is conflicting, and that's a plus, gives us the plus 55, and the daily is down. So you've got really two, but the ones that are important, these two right here, the weekly and the monthly, they're in conflict, and that usually gives you that trading range that we talk about on Mock Club TV. So let's clear this off, go to our next market, and the next market we're looking at is the Euro US dollar. Now, this gets back to the Sarkozy Merkel deal. Uh, they want to put a transaction tax on all financial transactions. Crazy, crazy idea because it'll just push the business to London and out of Europe. And it just doesn't, it just doesn't, I don't think these guys get it in terms of what, how fluid business is and how it can move quickly out of one country and into another country. And that's how things work now. It never used to be like that, but it is like that now. Market market fluidity in terms of money moving around the world can change very quickly, and I think it's only going to hurt rather than help this situation with Merkel and Sarkozy and the problem they have not looked at seriously, and they're really concerned about how to address it, and I don't think they can address it successfully. So we'll see. We lots of. I think this is going to be the year. 2012 is going to be a great year for traders because I think there'll be some fantastic opportunities to move in and out of markets. So let's go to our next market. We're going to be looking at Juniper Networks, which was up. 
is up, I should say, 7.24%. Looking at our score, and uh, you can see right now it's a big update. However, our monthly trade triangle is still short from 36.48, indicating the trend is down. So even though this market's had a big update, it still isn't out of the woods yet. It's still indicating the trend is down. If we go further out, you can see that this level here on the 25 level is really the key level. This, is, this today is just... So my guess would be with Juniper Networks, we're just going to see this market sort of just go back and forth, uh, and eventually we'll see it sort of just continue to go sideways as it builds. Uh, builds up. I think I don't think we'll see a lot more momentum on the upside. Uh, we do have obviously I see our negative monthly, positive green on the weekly, and a positive green on the daily. So you get a little upward momentum, but you still have a lot of action, a lot of work over the over this market is this going to be a similar pattern we don't know yet it's still too early but nonetheless it's not something to get totally excited about 70 a plus 70 is an emerging trend it's not a confirmed trend and that's the key thing to look at right now so let me clean this off the screen and let's go to uh, let me just go out a little bit further and take a, a one year view and as you can see this market's been coming down and you can see that's where the monthly trade triangles is that came in on May 24th of last year, obviously a superb trade. Uh, we don't make this up, and this is these are this is just a situation where we use our mechanical program, our uh, algorithm, I should say, and indicates when the market's going up and when it's going down. Right now, there's nothing to say that Juniper Networks is going up longer term, and this is the key thing. Most people sort of like micromanage the stuff, but if you look at these longer term trends in the weeklies and the monthlies, it tells you which way the market wants to go. So let's go to our next market. We've got several more markets to go through. This is Care Fusion. This is down over almost 9%. And look, everything was, everything is red on this. So a strong downtrend. Even though it says 60, this has just actually changed in the last, since we went into this mode. And you can see that if we put our weeklies in here, you can see we had a weekly today at 23.87. Uh, which is right here, the market's 23.23. So it's even about 60, what do we say, 60 cents lower than uh, where, and everybody had a chance to do this today because it opened actually over 24 and a half. So you had a chance to get short. So nonetheless, this looks like a pretty negative picture with all of our triangles red. And if you look even further, you can see the monthly came back right here at 26.15, that was back on July 29th. That's why I'm saying you would have avoided all this kind of whipsaw stuff that really can do uh, drive you crazy and also hurt your account. So let's go to the next market. And this is Netflix. Netflix, as you well know, it's up 6.8%. Uh, a couple of things here, and this is what we want to share this with you. Here's the monthly that came in at 225.30. Look at the move down. I don't think anybody predicted such a descent, a rapid descent in this market. And that's the thing. The triangles are totally neutral. The non-emotional, if you want to look at our blog about how emotional traders and people can get about certain subjects and also about the market, there's no room in the market for emotion. You really have to understand this is a very cold-hearted business in the sense you don't really have to get that involved. You can just use our trade triangles or something similar. We happen to think the trade triangles are better than anything else that's out there. And you can see right here a visual exam of this. This is the first weekly signal we had in this market. It's on January 4th. It's now January 9th. So it's almost a week ago. It's 77.59. And look, from 77.59, we're currently trading at 92. So it's about $15 higher than we had the signal. And that just shows you the power of the trade triangles. So let's go to our next market. We're looking at Citigroup. And Citigroup is longer term, negative. 43.40 is on the monthly trade triangles. We're currently trading at 28.07, 28.97 rather. So we've had the move from the lows that we're seeing here, below 22, to where we are right now. So it's a nice move, obviously. But can you make money on such a short move like that? Very, very difficult. But if you longer term, if you trade longer term, you can see I can just put this in here. I have to go all the way back here till May 11th at 43.40. And look at how you continue down. This is not to say this is turned around and you've got a bull market going. You really haven't got a bull market going. This market would have to do something really extraordinary. And I think right now, if we go closer, I think this we may be getting very close to wanting to get short the bank stocks again. 
and you can see right now how it just touches the how that's turning down there. I think this is maybe tomorrow, tomorrow the next day. It could be a very interesting day. Plus, you sort of haven't had. We made new highs right here, but look at the momentum. The momentum hasn't followed through. So very, very careful on these markets because I think this we could see a pullback in the bank stocks, this particular bank stock. And I'm going to show you another trade that you can look at uh, that I think is very interesting. Next stock is Bank of America, much the same there. You're at the high end, uh, monthly down, weekly and daily up. But longer term, it looks as though this market wants to go lower. So I think that's one of the key things to look at. But here's the trade I want to look at. And I'm going to go to the next market. It's Wells Fargo. Notice anything different on this? Plus 100. That's right. Everything is go on this market. So here's a trade. You could actually buy Wells Fargo. The symbol is WFC. And uh, you could tr buy go long Wells Fargo. And Going back here, I'm going to show you this. Uh, I'm at Wells Fargo. You could go long Wells Fargo, and you could go short City. City is a trade trading range. And here's the thought: If the market goes, we did the same thing with Rim and, Rim and Apple. It worked out very, very well. But that was long Apple, short Rim. But if the market goes down again, Citigroup is going to go down faster than Wells Fargo. If the market goes up, then you're going to see the stronger trend, which is Wells Fargo, go higher faster. So again, the idea would be you buy an equal amount dollar-wise of shares. They're very, very close, of course, maybe a difference of maybe 30 cents. So you could buy maybe X number of stock of Wells Fargo and short X number of shares of uh, Citigroup. And I think that uh, I think that could work out very, very well. Again, you're trading with the triangles. You're trading with the trend, which is up in Wells Fargo, and it's emerging in the Citibank stock. So, hey, this is Adam Hewis, and we've covered a lot of ground. We are very excited about this year. We think once we get through this week, we'll have some really good markets to trade, and we want to appreciate you stopping by and viewing our stuff. And we're also going to be having our, our obviously our big show on Wednesday. So please stay tuned to that. And also check out that blog posting. It's a firestorm blog posting this weekend. If you didn't catch what we said, check it out. Let us know what you think, and we'll uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Adam Hewison for Market Club. I'll see you tomorrow at the same time, same place, right on the Market Club TV channel. Thanks for stopping by.